So if my calculations are correct, this is my first full winter in Norway since 2006. Today I want to tell you guys about how I survived and a few of the things that I did in order to get through the winter even though I hate winter. So first of all, you know, if you watch this channel, you, you probably know that I enjoy warmer climates and humans are tropical animals after all. So, you know, we're naturally adapted to a tropical climate. That's why we have to put on clothing and use heating and stuff to stay alive or let alone comfortable. I've traveled my fair share in the tropics and over the last few years, I've typically gone somewhere slightly warmer and sunnier in the winter. For me, it's more about the sun actually and the, the strength of the daylight than it is about the temperature. It's okay to, to deal with cold. You can just put on more clothing, but the lack of sunshine, that's what really gets to me. So I have typically gone away for the winter to France, Canary Islands, and in the past I've traveled further with my brother, as you know on this channel, Costa Rica, Australia, Asia, etc. This winter though, for various reasons, mostly the travel restrictions due to the pandemic, I've chosen to stay at home, okay? And it's, it's a difficult choice for me because it's not that I just, you know, oh, I can't, I don't want to be in the winter. I've, I'm a Norwegian. I've lived in Norway and gone through a lot of winters in my life. I have experience with winter and it's not that I'm a wimp. It's more that I've learned over the years, even growing up, I remember always thinking every time s spring and summer came around again, I felt like, wow, so this is what it means to be alive. This is what it means to be, uh, you know, somewhat in contact with nature. The, the winter is so deadly, literally, to humans that we have so many layers of clothing and we're inside the house so much and it's, there's a certain distance between us and nature. In the summer, we're more at one, if you will, with the nature. But that that's all fine words and all. But basically what I'm saying is that I just... I do not feel happy and I do not feel good health-wise in the winter. It's it's not healthy to, to be in Norway in the winter. That's just undisputable. And it really has mostly to do with the sun or, or lack thereof. Okay, so here's what's going on in the winter. The sun uh, comes up later, goes down earlier, so there's a shorter day. And remember, with tropical animals, we're optimally adapted to a 12-hour day, 12-hour night cycle, the equatorial type of diurnal cycle. And that sort of cycle is really good for our sleep health, okay? We will fall asleep more easily and our sort of, our circadian rhythm, our internal biological clock is, you know, optimally adapted to that sort of cycle. It's only recent in evolutionary terms that we've moved out of the tropics and experienced these long days in the summer and really short days in the winter. It's, it's not really healthy, but at least when it comes to the long days in summer, you can block out the light with blackout blinds and, and cover your eyes when you're sleeping, etc. But when it's the winter time, and the sun goes down, you don't really have a good source of that sunlight. And that's really key for producing certain hormones and giving us that health that we need. Sunlight is an essential uh, part of health. So in addition to that, the sun is often behind clouds for weeks on end in the winter in Norway. We could In December this year, we had three solid weeks without any sun. Okay, it was not even barely, you, could, you couldn't even see the light. It was just completely thick cloud cover at all times. Horrible, horrible for health. Uh, here's how it affected me the most in the past and what I've done now to solve it. Okay, so in the past, I used to really struggle with sleep. I, I, I would lie in, in that three week period where there's like no sun, when that used to happen in the past, I would not fall asleep for like four hours every night, two to four hours. It would take me two to four hours just to fall asleep. And then my actual sleep would be 
suboptimal quality, okay? And I've seen this trend over the years and experimented and realized that when I'm not getting strong sunlight into my eyes, not, I'm not talking about staring into the sun, you shouldn't do that, but like being outdoors in the summer, being outdoor exposed to sunlight, daylight. When, when I'm not getting that, I get that sleep issue. And then as soon as the sun comes out and I get a solid day of sunshine, I'll fall asleep in like 10 minutes when I, when I uh, get to bed in the evening. So that told me something interesting. And that is that I need sunshine to sleep. And it's sort of counterintuitive, but really the light is what modulates our day-night cycle and our circadian rhythm, okay? So we do need that light in the day. And I don't know if you've heard about melatonin, but that is the sleep hormone, okay? And melatonin is produced in the brain by converting serotonin to melatonin, okay? And serotonin is produced or stimulated when we are exposed to daylight and sunlight. So when we're not getting it, we produce less serotonin and thus less melatonin. Of course, everyone's different in how sensitive they are to this problem. Uh, and I'm certainly one of the people that are very sensitive to it, okay? So for me, October, November, December, January, February, those sort of months, um, I just could not stay in Norway because it affected my life so badly by not being able to fall asleep and then feeling super tired in the day, etc. I was just spiraling out of control and I felt horrible. You know, by November, December, I used to feel horrible. This year, I've done something new, and that is to start supplementing with melatonin, okay? I started taking a supplement uh, early fall this year, last year, and just a small dose, okay? So the smallest dose that they recommend, I take about half of that, I think. So basically a very small dose, that I take half an hour before I turn off the light. So I, I go to bed, take the, my melatonin drops, I read for half an hour, put away the book, fall asleep within 10 minutes every night. That's how it's been since I started taking it every night. And it's made me able to stay in Norway during the winter because I'm actually not feeling that extreme fatigue because that melatonin regulates my sleep cycle and um, without the, 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 the stimulation from the sun, um, the lack of daylight in the winter, I'm not able to do that on my own. So for me, a supplement made sense. And I went out and I bought myself a supplement. I liked it. It worked. And then I contacted the, the people that actually sell it. And I asked them if they want to send me some more melatonin uh, just uh, in exchange for a video and an Instagram post, etc. So I want to mention it in this video. Uh, and that is a sponsored plug, I guess. But uh, it, it's not something that I do because I want to make money or anything like that. It's something that I do because I actually truly believe in the product. And I bought it myself initially, but now they've sent me a few more uh, of them. But it's only really available in Norway. So it's really for the Norwegians, okay? Here it is. It's basically some drops that you take. I'll put a link in the description with a code that if you're in Norway, you can use that code and get 20% off um, if you want to buy something from their website, I'll put the link in the description. So go check that out. And, and if you're interested, go and you're in Norway, buy some melatonin from them and give it a try in the winter at least. Uh, I really recommend it. It's made a huge difference for me. Uh, if you are outside of Norway and you can't get this particular product, there are lots of other products out there. And I just recommend you try melatonin if you have similar issues uh, that I do. But even if you don't really, and it's just not too big a deal for you, still consider the fact that you would naturally produce a lot more melatonin and sleep better as a result of it if you were in the tropics or in the sunny environment like the way you're supposed to be. So it might be beneficial for everyone to supplement with melatonin. I don't know. And of course, you should consult your healthcare professional and all that. I'm just suggesting or just telling you what I'm doing and saying that it's working for me. Um, so that's something that I've done this winter just to be able to survive the winter. But I honestly have to say that even though I do feel much better with the melatonin, I still am not really a fan of winter. It's, it's, it's just cold and uncomfortable and it's very beautiful though. It's very aesthetically pleasing. I do enjoy looking at the winter landscape 
Uh, I, I like the summer landscape more, but I like the winter landscape too. Um, but I'm, I'm just, it's just too much of a hassle and all the ice and as a runner, um, running on ice and running in the snow and getting wet and, and just, it's, it's just a hassle and a, I, I just hate it. <laughs> I hate winter. I survived and it's springtime now and I'm at the cabin and I'm going to head out for a run pretty soon. Check out my running channel, of course, if you haven't done so already, link in the description. Uh, and yeah, I'm just excited for spring to really come around and um, the snow to melt away. Let me know in the comments uh, what your experiences are this winter. Have you, do you enjoy winter? Do you like it? What do you do in winter? How do you survive winter? And have you tried melatonin? And what do you think about it? Alright, check out that link in the description for the people in Norway. And everyone else, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.